Hi everyone, my name is Monique. And I'm Naveen from Before You Play. And today we are going to be doing a teach and playthrough of Tricarion. Yes, this one's published by Mind Clash Games and designed by two different designers, Victor Peter and Richard Aman. And this is a game about us being dueling magicians in a vast land. And we're going to be doing a bunch <laughs> of different land. things, yes. And we're going to teach it today. Uh, Monique is going to do an excellent job teaching it. Oh. And I will just... Uh -huh, uh -huh. Hope so. <laughs> <laughs> so this is actually the first part of a four-part series where we're going to be showcasing uh, Mind Clash titles. The first part is going to be Tricarion, or we're going to be doing two playthroughs. The first one is the base game, which was which is what we're doing today. And then the next video will be with the Academy expansion. And like Naveen was mentioning, this is a game about dueling magicians. And so as unique as that theme is, it is fairly heavy. Mm -hmm. So we are going to do our best to teach it today. Now we are going to include timestamps down below if you do want to jump around. And if you'd like to see more videos like this in the future and follow us along on the Mind Class series, please consider subscribing. And with that, we are ready to begin. So if you'd please direct your attention to the center of the table, we are all set up here for our two player only game of Tricarion. Actually, yes. this is not two player only. This plays up to four, <laughs> by the way. We are only playing two players. That's right. Yes. And we are playing with the original base game right now. Mm -hmm. uh, so if you do not have the collector's edition or any of the bells and whistles, you can still play the version we are playing today. Uh, with one exception, which we'll tell you about later. And so welcome to Magoria. This is the vast land <laughs> that mm -hmm. Naveen was, uh, was mentioning. And so just to kind of give you the lay of the land, this is the city where we are going to be performing our tricks as magicians here in the theater. We're going to be going downtown to learn more tricks, to hire assistants, collect money, and then go to the market road in order to buy uh, components to prepare our tricks. Mm -hmm. And some of us may also decide to go to the dark alley, which is down here, where we are going to be uh, dipping our toes into uh, some mysticism, I suppose. <laughs> now, this part of the board is specifically for the dark alley expansion version of the game, which is a more advanced version. If if you're interested in playing the base base game then it is the opposite side of this board that just does not include this and it is two rounds shorter yeah, so five that, rounds compared to seven yes and that is included in the base game you can play with that mode without the dark alley today we are going to play with it and so like Naveen was mentioning in this game we play as magicians who are competing to become the most famous magicians in all of Magoria we're going to be doing this by learning additional tricks, preparing them and performing them in the theater and trying to earn the most amount of fame over the course of seven rounds in the advanced game. And so each player has their own magician workbook that details all of the different tricks that you can um, learn throughout the game, as well as all of their components and how many points they're worth, because it does take quite a bit of planning. It does, yes. Since we're playing the two player only game, we are also going to be including a variant from the Dalgard's Gift expansion for dueling magicians. And we'll explain that right before we get started with the playthrough. Now in this world, there are four main types of tricks that you can learn. There's mechanical, which is what Naveen's specialty is. Yep. There's a uh, spiritual, optical, as well as escape tricks, which happens to be my magician's specialty. And so at setup, everybody gets a specific board that has a specific specialty um, linked to it. Mm -hmm. We'll start the game with one starting trick, some starting components to prepare the trick, as well as a starting assistant. And all of those uh, setup aspects we will do before we start the gameplay. And so if you look at a trick card, all of these trick cards follow the same sort of anatomy. There are three different levels of trick cards and that is indicated by the number on the bottom right hand corner. There are specific components that you need in order to prepare this trick, which is kind of like the ingredients of setting up a trick. Mm -hmm. And in the middle here, it tells you what the benefits you'll receive are whenever you perform the trick. And that's going to be in the form of money and fame, usually. And so the various areas of the board have to do with the different aspects of the tricks, such mm -hmm. as downtown is for learning more tricks, market row is for getting these components, and then the, finally the theater is where you actually perform these tricks and receive those yields. Mm -hmm. And so the base game with the Dark Alley expansion is played over the course of seven rounds. And at the start of each round, the very first thing that happens is all players have the opportunity to advertise. And so if you want to become the most famous magician, you have to advertise your show. You gotta let people know. Right? Yep. And this is done in turn order, starting with the player who's in last. And this is the entire scoreboard here. It kind of wraps around the theater. And so if I were behind Naveen in points, then I would technically be going first for the round. Uh, on the left hand column over here is where we would advertise. And so the amount of money you pay in order to advertise uh, is dependent on turn order. Mm -hmm. The higher in points you have, which means the later you go in the round, the more expensive it's going to be. Advertising always gets you two points. So if I am going to be first player this round, I can choose to pay one money in order to get two points. Uh, in a two player game, then you only use the one and three slot. And so Naveen would have the option of paying three money for two points. Mm -hmm. This is always optional. 
but it is a nice way for you to gain those uh, you know additional points especially for a small amount of money afterwards we go into the assignment phase and this is kind of the main uh, part of the game this mm. is where we're going to be doing all of our planning and all of our actions and if you have any confusion as to what goes next in the the phase order everybody has a magician workbook and on the back side it details everything in order of uh, what has to happen during a round and so for this phase, each player has their own hand of these small assignment cards. And these cards pertain to the different locations on the board. Like we have Dark Alley, we have Downtown. In addition, each player starts the game with a Magician as well as an Apprentice. And we also start by selecting a, uh, a Specialist that's going to give us a third token. And these are the workers that you're going to be placing out onto the board. They're going to dictate how many actions you can take per round and uh, how many of these assignment cards you're going to place. Mm -hmm. And so assuming that we started with these specialists, then I would have the engineer as well. I would have the manager here. Giving us three total workers to start the game. And so this phase is done in secret. You're going to basically look at your whole hand of uh, assignment cards, and you're going to assign them face down to each of the workers that you plan on sending out for the round. You don't have to send all of them out, but it's usually advisable that you do if you can afford to pay them. Once everyone's placed their assignment cards, then you simultaneously reveal them. And then you go into the next phase, which is placing your characters out onto the board. This is done in player turn order, and you basically take turns putting out one worker each until everybody is done. Mm -hmm. Which means players also get to decide which order they put these workers out, considering we can now see where everybody plans on going for the round. Yes, exactly. So there's a pre-action programming section, and then once everything is revealed, you now have to make the decision as to what is the most important thing to kind race towards. So starting with the downtown area here, uh, first of all, the worker placement spots are all of these circles, so that each location has the same uh, structure in that sense. Anytime you see lightning bolt symbols, that pertains to actions, and so each of your workers also has a certain number of innate actions. Your magician represents you, so this is always going to have the most number of, of uh, base actions, mm -hmm. which is three. And so say I were to send my magician to the downtown area, then I would choose one of these four available spots. Only one person can go in each spot. And depending on where I place, it's going to give me a certain number of additional actions. The rightmost spot here is zero <laughs> additional actions. So you never want to take that if you can avoid it. And then the leftmost spot here is up to two additional actions. So that's always a nice spot to go to. So if I were to place my magician there, then I would have a total of five actions to take in the downtown area. Three plus the two modifier on the board. And these are more like action points. Mm -hmm. Uh, because the different action types cost a certain number of action points. Yep. So the way that downtown works is at the start of the round, these six uh, downtown dice are going to be rolled, and they dictate what you can do there in terms of how much money you can acquire, which tricks you can learn, and which types of specialists you can hire. This area here allows you to spend three action points to take either this amount of money or that amount of money from the supply, mm -hmm. and so these dice go up to six money with a minimum of three. So say I were to go uh, to downtown, I could spend three action points to take five money from the supply, and then I would rotate it to its X side, because that means this die is no longer usable for the round. Mm -hmm. And now that this is on the X face, players can only take money from this die. These dice allow you to learn more tricks, and so these dice pertain to the different types of, uh, of trick types that we discussed at the start. Mm -hmm. And I also want to mention that the reason why you have a specialty is because in lieu of the symbol shown on the dice, you can always opt to learn your specialty type of trick. Exactly. Trick cards are usually placed up here, but because of space reasons, we have laid them out all over here on the left side of the board. They're not organized in any particular order. You can always pick up the entire stack of a specific type of trick and look for the trick that you want, assuming it hasn't already been taken, which is a big part of this game. Yes. All of the tricks are unique. There are three different levels, and uh, there are only four tricks per level exactly. and so if you're looking at something that you really really wanted but your opponent ends up taking it then you're just kind of out of luck and just a heads card. up all of these tricks are listed in your rule book so mm -hmm. on other players turns you can be looking through this so that you're not slowing down the game the one rule uh, when acquiring tricks that you have to consider is in order for you to take a specific level of trick so say i wanted to take the second level, which is level 16, I have to be at least a minimum fame threshold of 16. So you basically have to be at least that famous in order to know the trick. If you don't, you can pay uh, the difference in money. 
The third level of tricks, which is level 36, is specific to the Dark Alley uh, expansion. Mm -hmm. And these give players a, a personal end game scoring condition, assuming you have all the components needed at the end of the game to prepare that trick. And the last type of action that you can take here is hiring additional assistants. We'll talk a little bit more about assistants during the gameplay, but the general overview of what they do is they give you additional workers mm -hmm. because each type of assistant has their own uh, specific type of worker. But depending on the assistant, they also give you some sort of additional bonus. And those are all the things that you can do in the downtown area. I also want to note that for one action point, you can re-roll any die, and for two action points, you can take a die and just place it to the side, the face side that you, that you want. Mm -hmm. And lastly, in all of these locations, with the exception of the theater, we're going to be collecting these shards. You can spend one shard to increase your um, action points by one. And so that can only be done once. And again, you cannot do it in the theater. Mm -hmm. You're going to want to. You might even forget this rule and attempt to do it at some point, but you are not allowed to do it in the theater. It's listed right there. Do not do it. <laughs> Front and center stage. Okay, the next area that we should talk about is the market row. And this essentially is how you get the different components that make up your tricks. So components come in three different tiers. There's level one components, level two, and level three. And essentially they cost one, two, or three dollars or money per unit that you purchase. And that is respective, meaning the level one uh, components cost one money and so on. So the, the higher the level of components, the more expensive they are. Exactly. So all the components that are available for purchase are on this left-hand side. Think of it as like your window shopping. Uh, for one action point, you can buy up to three of one type of component, which means if you had three action points, you can purchase up to three different types. Yes, it's one action point per type. Per type of purchase. per piece. Exactly. And any excess action points that you have, you can tap this section here that is used in conjunction with buying components. And that gives you a one money discount per action point that you spend there. With the minimum value of one. If you have a trick that requires some of the goods that are not listed here, you can take one of these two actions here. This action here lets you order components for a future round. So let's say I really needed this dove or this bird. What I can do is I can choose one of these windows and place it there. And in a subsequent round, the very next round, it would replace the one that is in the associated window. And now this would be available and this mirror would no longer be available in round two going forward. Yes. So it's interesting because you can kind of see what's about to leave mm -hmm. and see what's coming in. So if you really needed that component, then this is kind of like your only chance to, to buy it. Exactly. But if this is not fast enough, you can always decide to quick order a component instead, placing it in this window. This costs two action points just to quick order the component. And then you would have to take an actual order action, which is that one action point that Naveen was discussing. In addition, these components cost one money more than usual. And this component is only going to be here for the round. The next location, which is the dark alley. The reason why this location is part of the advanced game is because of two things. The first thing is uh, the special assignment cards. Now, the way that these work is they are also linked to a specific location um, on the board or on your player board, just like your regular assignment cards are. But the difference is when you play them, they give you a specific benefit, which is usually fantastic. Mm -hmm. For example, the topmost uh, downtown card here says, before you take this action, you may set one downtown die to the result of your choice and re-roll another one. Like, that is a really awesome thing to be able to do in the downtown area. So these special assignment cards are great. If you don't want to use it for its awesome benefit, instead you can use it for the bottom right hand corner here, which is an additional action point. And so taking your first special assignment card costs one action point, but starting with the second one onwards, it's two action points mm -hmm. each. The other thing you can do here is you can move the prophecy wheel. Each round, we're going to have one prophecy that is active for the round. And these are basically just rules that break the rules. Yes. <laughs> that give somebody some sort of advantage or a disadvantage, usually. Yeah, there's a large stack of them, so we'll go over them as they come out. But basically, spending one action allows you to rotate the wheel. So you're just sort of uh, putting the prophecy that you want in place for the next round. Yep. And that's it for the dark alley. Before we go into the theater, which is probably the most complicated part of the game, we're going to discuss the workshop. And that is a location that's actually on your player board. This is where you go in order to load your tricks. Assuming I have all of the proper components listed here in my toolbox, I can go to this location and spend the number of action points listed on the trick itself in order to load it. You first have to sign it one of your trick markers. And each player has four sets of these, and they basically just assign the trick a specific symbol so so that you can easily identify which trick it is mm -hmm. when your markers are out into uh, in the theater area. 
The trick cards tell you how many markers you can place on it. And so specifically for this card, the Burning Mummy, I have to spend one action point in order to load it with just one trick. <laughs> and that is essentially the main reason why you're going to be traveling to the workshop. And finally, we have the theater. And we're remembering that we cannot spend a <laughs> Jacarion shard here. No attractions. So, no. So the theater is divided into two different um, locations, technically. We have the front stage, which is where we're going to be performing with our magician only. Specifically. Yes. And we have the backstage. And this is where our other kind of workers are going to be working over there to uh, load our tricks into these different uh, theater cards. Now, when you go to the theater, you're actually going to be claiming a specific column of spots because each column is divided into uh, different days. We have Thursday over here, Friday, Saturday, and Sunday. And that's important because it's going to determine any kind of extra bonuses or um, negative yields that your tricks are going to have when you perform them. Mm -hmm. When you send your workers to the theater, you're going to choose a spot either backstage or in the front if you have a magician. But once you place a worker, say I place mine here in the Thursday spot, if I were to now place my magician out, I am required to place my magician there because you are reserving a day in the theater. So over the course of the game, we're going to have several of these theater cards show up. And there are three different levels. They're divided by color. The theater card that I'm holding right now is specific to the Dueling Magicians variant in the expansion because it has these neutral uh, trick markers here for a two-player game. When you go and send a worker backstage, you're going to be loading your trick markers that you assigned to the specific tricks onto the theater cards. And so earlier I loaded my Burning Mummy um, card with this trick marker, the spade, and all of the trick markers have the exact same symbols on them. All the corners are uh, represent each of the different types of tricks that you can learn in the game. Mm -hmm. For one action point, you can load a trick onto a theater. An important rule is the exact same trick that you're loading cannot be on the same theater because you're not going to perform the same trick twice, right? Mm -hmm. But the main rule is if you can kind of see here on this uh, theater card, there are circles in between some of the uh, diamond shapes, the type of trick that you are loading, which is a chain symbol in the example of my burning mummy over here, has to be inside one of those circles. So this would be legal. I could do this because that chain symbol is inside that circle, or I can do that. Whatever will make it so that the chain symbol is inside a circle. Now you may notice that some of these circles have a, a little uh, shard symbol uh, in the middle. The reason for that is because, say on a future turn, Naveen were to load his trick, and his trick happens to be a mechanical trick, so it's that gear symbol right there. If he were to place his trick right here, which is legal because the gear symbol is in this circle, we would create a linking bonus right here because both my trick, which is the chain symbol, is matching with his chain symbol in this circle. And so if you are able to create a linking bonus uh, inside of a circle that has a Tricarion shard in it, then each player gets a Tricarion shard. Now, if you did that with yourself using two different tricks, you still only get one Tricarion shard because it is per player. Mm -hmm. And so um, we talked about a little bit about how Tricarion shards work in this game. They're also going to be points at the end of the game for any of them that you don't use. But just know that there are many uses for Tricarion shards. And that is the main concept of how you load tricks onto these theaters. Uh, as the rounds progress, these theaters are going to move over and we're going to have more of them. So we'll see more and more options of theaters to place our tricks in. The other action that you can do here is for one action point, you can also move a trick from one theater to a different theater. And going back to this linking bonus, actually, I forgot one very important point. Whoever created the linking bonus, and so in this example, it would have been Naveen, would also get either money or points depending on what level the trick was. Mm -hmm. In the case of a level one trick, it's one fame or one money. In the case of level 16, it's two fame or two money. And 36 is three fame or three money. So it's up to you what you need the most in that moment. And so the front stage over here is specifically for the magicians. And the reason why is because this is where you place your uh, magician when you want to perform next phase. Mm -hmm. If you don't have anything to perform, you don't have any tricks in any of the theaters, then you likely wouldn't put your magician here. But if you did have tricks out there and you wanted to perform, then you would be required to do that or else you would not be able to perform. Only the magicians can perform the trick. Once everybody is done taking all of their actions and placing all their characters out who they wanted to place out, then this phase ends and now we go into the performance phase, which is where we get a lot of our points. And so starting with the Thursday slot, whoever has a magician here gets to choose whichever theater they would like to perform in. It has to be a theater where they have at least one trick in mm -hmm. it. They can't just choose to perform somebody <laughs> else's tricks for the day. Yes. And then what happens here is everybody who has a trick in that theater 
gets all their benefits according to what the trick card says. And so if I were here on this slot and I were to perform uh, this theater here, I would look at whichever trick in front of me has these trick markers. And so that is why, that's the whole reason why we assign these trick marker symbols to them as identifiers. Mm -hmm. And then I would see what the trick gets me. And so in this example, the burning mummy gets me two fame and two money. And I would get that immediately. And that holds true for everybody who has trick markers here. Yeah, so even myself, even though I, my magician is not here at the day of the performance, all the tricks that are in that theater that's being performed that day, those players get the benefits. The one caveat here is there are modifiers depending on if you perform on Thursday or on Sunday. If you perform on Thursday, all of your trick yields are going to yield one less fame and one less money. And so because I performed on a Thursday, my burning mummy will only get me one fame and one money, unfortunately. And so that actually holds true for anybody else who has a trick marker here who does not have any characters in the theater at mm -hmm. all. Which means because Naveen doesn't have a presence in the theater, he is subjected to my Thursday yields, which is unfortunate for him. If he had at least one character on a different day, say Friday, then he would be subjected to the modifiers of the day that he was in. The reverse is also true. So say Naveen on Friday were to perform a, a theater where I have my trick markers, because I had chosen Thursday, I am still subjected to my yield modifiers. Mm -hmm. Going on Thursday is nice because it allows you to choose your theater first, but unfortunately you just get less benefits. Sunday is really nice. Uh, you get last pick, but it's plus one fame and plus one money uh, for each of your tricks. After all players have taken the rewards for their tricks on the theater, then you consult this chart here, which tells you all of the rewards that you get for performing the theater. The player performing gets one fame for every link that's present there, even if they didn't make it themselves, which is probably a majority of the time, especially in higher player accounts. And then you also get a benefit depending on who was placed in your backstage area. So in this example, I have my engineer backstage, and so my engineer will, would get me one Tricarion shard. The assistant gets you two fame, and the uh, manager gets you three money. So if you need somebody specific or if you need a specific kind of a benefit, you may want to put that specialist in that backstage area. And last but not least, each theater also gets you a, an innate bonus for performing it. And so this specific Riverside theater gets you one money. The more you progress to the more advanced theaters, the better those benefits get. Mm -hmm. And that's everything. That is the performance phase. Once everybody has, has finished performing, then you go into all the end of round uh, kind of stuff you have to do. You have to pay your wages. Mm -hmm. So for every character disc that you placed out, they each have a certain amount of money that you have to pay. Your magician, of course, is free because it's you. For each one that you cannot pay, you lose points, actually. It's minus two points per money that you were unable to pay. And again, you only pay the ones that were deployed out onto the board. Mm -hmm. If you kept anybody back, you don't have to pay the fees. Right. And then you do a lot of cleanup. So you roll the dice, you, you bring your characters back, you move the prophecy wheel, etc. And all of that stuff we're going to showcase during the playthrough. At the end of seven rounds, the game will end, and then you go into end game scoring. Uh, for each Tricarion shard that you have left over, it's one point. You get one point for every three money. Any of your leftover special assignment cards that you did not use is worth uh, two points. And then you also get any points for the level 36 cards that you are able to acquire and you have at least the components to prepare mm -hmm. the trick for. To a maximum of 20 points per category, per category. by the way. Yep. And at that point, whoever has the most fame wins. And uh, then you kind of give a sigh of relief because okay. the game is over. Okay. <laughs> it's probably really intense. Uh -huh. So that's pretty much everything. If there's anything that we missed, you know, this is probably a little bit more of an involved teach. Uh, we will try to you know, get to it during the playthrough. Mm -hmm. But we're just going to do a little bit of cleanup and then we'll get started with our playthrough. Okay, so we have reset the board, we are set up, we have to figure out who goes first, and then there's a couple decisions that have to be made. Ready? Yes. Okay. Me, okay. okay. You go first. So we do have some starting uh, setup things. We need to decide which uh, starting trick, mm -hmm. our starting specialist, etc. So starting with me, I think I choose my starting trick first. Uh, I think so, yes. Right? Okay. Mm -hmm. So it has to be uh, one of your one of the um, level one tricks of your specialty. I'm going to go with barricaded barrels. An escape type trick. Okay. Because that is my specialty. I'm gonna go with the living piano here. Uh, this one, when I load it, it has up to three tricks that are loaded. Uh, it'll be worth one fame and one uh, buck. So hopefully I can make this work. Oh, good. Mine is also one fame, one buck, but yours yes. requires a lot of components. It does. We also get components up to a coin, a total coin value of two. And so I think I'm gonna go with a level two component right here, which mm. is 
this piece because I am future planning. I know this has nothing to do with barricaded barrels, mm -hmm. but hopefully it'll serve me in the future. Sure. You know, I'll take the bird. This living piano does require me to have a bird, so mm -hmm. I will take that an animal. Awesome. And now we choose our starting specialist. So the specialists come with a bonus if you if you uh, start with them in the beginning of the game. Mm -hmm. So I think I'm going to go with I don't remember who the name of the specialist. It's the one that lets you have another trick to I think start it's the, the game. The engineer. This one, yes, the engineer. I think this is the one that I that I had earlier. Yep. Uh, these are double sided. It's just a different different artwork. Male or female. Uh huh. And it also allows me to choose a second trick to start the game. And this can be any level one trick, but I think I'm going to go for another one of my own uh, my own type here. Sure. Which is the burning man. Burning mummy. Oh, mummy. mummy yeah. <laughs> Close. <laughs> yeah. Formerly uh, a man. Yeah. And so this is this this is the whole reason why I took that that component oh, because of this. Future planning uh, for sure. When I go to prepare this trick, I can put one additional trick marker on there. Nice. That is what the specialist Definitely. does. Okay, and I'm going to pick the one that I had in the demo, uh, the manager. So she allows me to put another set of components out for a value of two total. Yes. Their ongoing benefit is um, I get one additional one additional component. So if you see that this is kind of like this little red superimposed outline, if I put one down, it's really I have two of that type of component. Yes, it doesn't double your components. It just no. gets you one additional. Uh, so you can go ahead and, well, I guess I'll, yeah, I already chose mine. You can go ahead and choose more components then. Okay, and seeing as this living piano needs uh, some some of this this and some of this, I'm going to take one and one. And so now I have technically two mirrors and two planks of wood. Do you have everything you need for this trick? I do. When you start the game, if you have all the components needed for the trick, then it comes fully prepared. So you have, you are being efficient. I am stocked. So you have to assign, we actually have both have to assign identities sure. to our tricks. So I'm going to assign uh, this diamond symbol. That'll be, uh, so the living piano is associated with the diamond symbol. Okay. And so now it is locked and loaded <laughs> with three of these because if you see very closely it's one two three are kind of superimposed on top of each other so naveen saved himself yes. a trip to the workshop I, can, I did that's what i was trying to do he could start loading into the theater already which exactly. is nice and lastly we get our money so yes. first player gets 10. i don't quite remember the denominations of these metal <laughs> coins yeah so no. we're gonna say that these are five okay. so let's just take two of these and uh maybe maybe this is 10. let's go with that being 10. and this is 20. let's do it right Okay, so I get five, Naveen gets 12, so Ooh. here's 12. Thank you. And we also start with one to carry on shard each. And I know that was a big setup, but we are finally ready. What did to do? We okay. wanted to include you all in this decision making. Yes. How are you feeling? Uh, good, we do need to roll the dice. Though. Are you feeling good? Oh, sorry, not good. No, 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 no. I, I feel good about starting though. So we do I think Naveen's a little bit anxious. I'm anxious. <laughs> about the planning. I'm very bad at this game. <laughs> I will admit this. Okay, ooh, so we have, okay, one. Two. Oh, we have an X'd out. That's fine. I don't see I either don't... of us running to yeah. to get new tricks uh, okay. in the first round. So it looks like we can hire these two type of people. Yep. Uh, you can get any trick of your choice only one time. Uh, and there's a lot of money to be had. Yes. So that's Would something be nice. to know. For the first round, we do not start with a prophecy. Nope. Uh, and so this is going to happen starting in the next round. Mm -hmm. And just so you know, the master of chains is who I am. And so before the performance phase, I can do a special reschedule action, which is this in the theater. And uh, when I do that, I actually get the linking bonuses. And if that doesn't make sense, then maybe I'll do it at some point in the game. <laughs> okay, my mechaniker, uh, one time uh, per round, one of my apprentices, the little hand glove symbol, uh, has an extra action point. So That's instead of it being awesome. one, it's a two. Woo, Naveen, I think you are set up to do well. I hope, I don't... <laughs> It's all a setup, that's all it is. <laughs> After that, I fall apart. All right, we are ready to begin. And so we are going to draw our first card in a Dual Magician's deck. We didn't explain this in the teach. This is the variant that comes with the expansion. And so what happens is we flip it over and mm. we essentially have to block off spots in a two-player only game to make these spots a little bit tougher, oh, a lot more scarce. Look at this. I oh. think I have all the components I need right now. Wow. That's not good. Yeah, the dark alley gets blocked off a little bit. And then we have, uh, oh, in the theater, you cannot even perform if you wanted to on these days. Amazing. Uh, well. Amazing. <laughs> you couldn't even load back here. So no. you couldn't even do that additional uh, load action. No. So we have our initiative order. We are going to start the first round by deciding to advertise. Do you advertise for one, one money for me for two points? Let's see. I only have 10, 10 bucks here. You know, I'm going to do it. 
So it's only one buck for me, so that, that seems like a steal. So one, two, three, four. There is an argument to be had about not pushing up on the, the scoring track so early just so you can maintain first. Yeah. But I think I'm just going to do it or else I'm going to sit here and think about it for too long. Again, at the end of the game, I think it's a three to one exchange on money for points. You're yes. getting a one to two exchange right now. So it's a very good exchange right now. Yep. Would you like it for a, a worse exchange? I would not <laughs> like it for a worse exchange. So I'm not advertising. Monique is advertising. <laughs> All right. So then now we go into our assignment phase. Yep. So choose which cards you're going to uh, place and where. Plan. All right. I think I'm going to go right there, there, and there. I don't know. First first round, first turn. This is hard. <laughs> At least we don't have any prophecies to worry about. That's true. Yeah. Okay. Ready? Yeah. So All right. We reveal. Flip. Mm -hmm. Where are you going, Naveen? I... Oh, you theater know. so soon. Well, they're all prepared. I don't know what I'm doing. So, <laughs> so. <laughs> so early. Yeah. Well, okay. So it look, the beauty of this planning phase is it looks like I don't have any competition for Market Row. So I don't have to go there first. The only competition I have is downtown. So we're going to go there. Uh, this is plus two? Yes. Okay. So we're definitely <laughs> yeah. going there. Yeah. <laughs> Definitely want to go to the higher one. So, yeah. Okay. <laughs> Sending my magician over here uh, gets me a base action points of three plus two. So I can do five uh, points of actions here. All right. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to take the money. So six money from the bank. Here's a five and a one. And this gets flipped to the X because I've used it. And then I have two more action points left. I could spend a Tricarion shard, uh, which I think I will do. I'm just going to spend the Tricarion Shard to make it a three action points total so that I could take this action. And I'm going to hire this uh, specialist, who I think is the assistant. Yes, there you go. And so the assistant, I'm going to attach to my board a little bit later because I don't actually um, get that character until the end of the round. Right. Mm -hmm. So that's it for me. Now to you. Okay, very good. Well, um... You literally have no competition for no any competition. of those spaces. So. Yes. So I will... Okay, let's just go... Let's just go to the theater now. Okay. So, because there's only one spot, I might as well go to Sunday with my um, assistant here, my uh, manager, because okay. if I do this and perform, I'll get some extra cash by doing this. So, I'm going to go to Sunday because it's a little more lucrative versus Saturday. And then I am going to take uh, two minus one because Sunday has a minus one. So, I only have one action point. And I'm going to load one of my tricks. So, if I put it here, this would be legal. And I would create a linking bonus right there. Yep. Is that where you want to go? I think so, right? Yeah, I think that's the only place really that you can create a linking bonus. Yeah. So that would get you, would you like one fame or one money? Uh, I will take, I'll take fame. Let's be famous. Wow. You got your one point there. You didn't, you didn't even have to spend any money for that. No. Well, the reason why I'm taking that is because when I perform with this particular helper, mm -hmm. um, I'm going to get money. They're specialists. This specialist <laughs> helper. How dare you? Specialist helpers. Uh, and so the reason for that is because that is a level one trick. That is so. yes. That's good. All right, so back to me. I'm going to go to the market row. I have to do this in this order. So let's go to the market row with my apprentice here. And I'm going to go to this spot. So I get one plus one. So two action points to spend. And so I'm going to use both of those to purchase uh, components. So it's one action point per type. So my first type of component is going to be this one which I don't remember exactly what all of these are anymore. Like a wood plank. So I think I'm going to go with a wood plank, yeah. <laughs> so I'm going to buy three of these with that one action point. So it's going to cost me three okay. money. So can I have three of those, please? Sure. And then for my second action point, I'm going to purchase uh, this one, which is probably like a metal sheet. And I'm going to do the same. Three three of those for another three bucks. Uh, the metal sheet? The grayish one? Yeah. Wow. So I've maxed out on my buying potential uh, in this area. So I don't have any more, no more points, that's it. And if it's not clear, you stack same same type components uh, in your in your workshop. And from what I remember of the game, I don't think you'll ever need more than three of any type of goods. So yeah, that's kind of the max that you'll ever need. Trick requires four. Four, yeah. That's a lot of components. It is, like, yeah. What are you doing at this point <laughs> on stage? <laughs> yeah. Okay, so uh, I'm gonna buy myself some time and think. <laughs> so I'm gonna go <laughs> here and just place my magician out. Literally no actions to take other than saying that I'm gonna be performing that theater yes. uh, later on. You can't so. believe you're performing in the first round. I don't know. Now I feel like I'm behind. <laughs> I don't know. Yeah, all the magician does is reserve a spot. Yeah. All right, so then back to me for my final turn and my, uh, my engineer is going to the workshop. 
Okay. So two base action points, which is nice because I need both of those in order to load both of these tricks. Mm -hmm. So my barricaded barrels is now fully prepared because it only needed uh, two of these wood things. And now I'm wondering why I bought three. For the future. Maybe for the future, yeah. maybe. If I don't use it, then that was a, a coin uh, not well spent. This trick gets me, allows me to load two of them, two markers. Yeah, because there's one and then one kind of superimposed there. Yes, which means I'll be able to do uh, two of these in the future. And then for my second action point, I'm gonna load my, my burning mummy. This typically will only allow me to load one, but because it is in my engineer spot, I can load two of them. Yeah, that's the benefit that you have there. She can, she can yes. load an extra one. And this is the one that required this level two component here and the metal sheets. So okay, now we are, shape. we're at least ready for the next round. You're in great shape. If anything. Uh, and that's me. I'm done. Naveen is in planning mode over here. <laughs> I'm deep in this Since, book. Yeah. Okay, so I'm gonna send my apprentice here. And because I am the mechaniker, one time per round, this one is actually a plus one. So it's gonna be one plus zero plus one. So I have two <laughs> action points. You have to add the zero. I, well, just, it's a flow chart you kind of thing. Spending, spending your spending shard? my shard to make it three. Oh, good. So that I can learn a new trick, so or an illusion. <laughs> and uh, I'm going to go ahead and turn this question mark into an X, and I am going to take... Literally any level one. Any level one, and I believe it's the rabbit out of the hat. It's with the eyeballs here. So I'm going to take the rabbit out of the hat. I have only one of the components, but I'll try to get more later. And <laughs> let's go ahead and assign that here. I see you're crossing... Crossing uh, types, you're now no longer in your specialty. So I'm specializing in a couple different, I'm a jack of all trades, master of none. So let's go ahead and assign <laughs> this trick clovers. All Great. right, that's me. Every, everyone's been assigned? Everyone has been assigned. All right, so we go into the performance phase and the only person performing here is Naveen. Yeah. For some reason, he'd like to perform this beautiful, <laughs> well, maybe he just wants some starting resources. Maybe. So typically we would have more options of theaters but because it's the only one, Naveen must perform that one. So first thing is you get a bonus for all of the links. I see you've created one link, right? Yep. So that is one fame. One fame. There you go. Uh, before that, actually, you're supposed to get the yields for that trick. What does it get you? Yeah, so that trick gets me uh, one fame and one buck. Which is increased by one and one yep. because you're on Sunday. So two So two, two fame, one, two, and two bucks. It's always nice to receive money in this game. Some money. Uh, who do you have backstage? Uh, I have your the manager. Manager, so, that's so another you get three. another three money. Hey, you didn't even need to go downtown to get money for this. That's why I didn't. Yeah, exactly. that's awesome. And finally, you get uh, one additional money for the actual theater itself. Thank you. So now that this trick has been performed, it leaves the theater and goes into Naveen's supply. It does not go back onto the trick. He right. must re-prepare the trick if he wants uh, you know, the full thing. Down the road. But because this trick still has uh, markers on it, you can only re-prepare it once it's been completely emptied. Exactly. Yeah. So That's that it. is the performance phase. So now we're gonna do end of round stuff. We first uh, have to pay our wages for all the people you sent out. And so for me, that's a total of three money. It's Same. two plus one. So three money. Same one plus two. Thank you. We grab our characters from the board. So I'm just gonna take these three. And technically orders arrive, but nobody ordered anything. We move the performance card. So this is gonna move one slot over. We're gonna have a new uh, theater pop up. So now we have options for when we load. Mm -hmm. Once this theater uh, leaves this corner spot here, it gets kicked off the board. So yes. any trick markers that are still there because we didn't perform them, also get removed, they get taken which out. is not good. In higher player counts, the trick, the uh, the theaters actually go, they wrap around a little bit more mm -hmm. this way. Then we remove these posters, move the turn counter, because now we're going into round two. Right. And then now we have our first prophecy. Yes. So we did not uh, talk about the prophecies at all because they weren't in play in that first round. But now this is the active prophecy. And so for this round only, each time we spend a Tricarion shard, which is hilarious because neither of us have any, yep. it's worth two additional action points instead of one. <laughs> yeah. uh, if anybody wants to go over here to turn these around, just so you know, for the next round, if we don't uh, move that, this prophecy means that if you advertise that turn, your apprentices are worth an additional action point. Wow. So that's only if you advertise. Only if you advertise. So it's like, what is that, like bribing? <laughs> Something like that, yeah. I'm also going to slide this over to make room for my new uh, my new specialist. Sure. So I have the uh, assistant. So now that I have my assistant, when I go to the workshop, I can spend one action point to move uh, my apprentice to this spot, which makes the apprentice free. I guess they're like a uh, an unpaid intern. Sure. Which 
I wouldn't do that in real life. I would pay my interns, but <laughs> what can you do? And <laughs> these go back to our hands. Sure. Okay, so now we are in the second round. Let's roll the, the downtown dice. Yes. And these are going to be placed somewhere else. Right, okay. So let's do this. Got to get the carry-on shards. Okay, we have one X. Ooh, lots of money to be had again. Six and a four. And these two. Would you like to pull the next uh, yeah. dueling magician card? They're exactly our type of... Uh, of trick types? Trick types, yeah. Okay, so the next one is the two middle. Okay. Uh, the two outer. So these ones, the two outer. In the down in the market row. And the two inner on the dark alley. So these spots. All right, we are blocked okay. off. Okay. Okay, so initiative order is the same because I am still um, trailing Naveen. Mm -hmm. Uh, and so we are going to decide now if we want to advertise. I will, well, I will advertise. You're going to advertise? Yeah, it's only one coin for me. So I'm going to put my poster. Wait, this is not me. Where's my poster? Actually, this is me. Yeah, I was like, that is me. <laughs> yeah. So I'm going to advertise for two points. And so now we're tied. Would you like to spend three money? No. No? Mm -mm. All right. So let's go into our um, assignment phase. So now I have okay. an additional person here. That's nice. Okay. So time to assign. I'll yes. Go one... I have chosen. I hope you are not going to uh, a couple of these spots. I really don't want to be in competition with you here. Gosh, I, we can yeah. be friendly, Naveen. I don't know. We can be one of those like fr <laughs> frenemies. Frenemies? Magician frenemies. frenemies? We'll see. All right, ready? Yep. Reveal. Okay. Two, three, four. Ooh. Oh, yes. Hey. You're not going to either of these places? That's no, well, great. Well, I went to downtown last time, and uh, I don't know. There's All a lot right. of money there to be had. I should have probably... I don't have enough workers to go everywhere, you know? You, you are going to the theater, though. Uh, but neither of us are performing. So I guess I'll have to go to the theater first. Lock it in. Lock it in. Well, no, it's because if I want to load tricks, I it's a minus one to go on Sunday. And these are the only two available spots. Mm. So I'm going to go and send my, um, my assistant to the theater. And I'm just going to go to one of these backstage Saturday spots. Cool. Uh, so I can load up to two tricks because I have two action points. And they have to be, well... We have two theaters now. Now, because they are the same type of trick, uh, it makes it easy for me to make a linking bonus. Sure. I can just put this here because it's the chain symbol. So that's technically legal. It's in this circle. Uh, it does not form a linking bonus with this neutral marker, unfortunately, because mm -hmm. that's the gear and the eyeball. And then this one is going to go right there so that we have both uh, chains in that circle. So I've created a linking bonus, which means I get either one money or one fame. I'm going to go with money. <laughs> I also get a Tracarion shard, but again, because they're both me, I only get one. Back to you. Where are you going to go? There's really no more competition for the rest of these spots, so mm -hmm. whatever serves you the best. Okay, uh, the order of operations here is really important, so I have to go to the market row, and so I'm going to take my manager, go here, so it's two plus one. I don't have a shard to modify that, so I have three total action points. Uh, knowing that this rabbit out of the hat required two ingredients that I don't have, I'm mm -hmm. going to buy uh let's see how many do i need to buy of this this is always the hard thing so i'm gonna buy three of these and three of these that way i just have it i never have to deal with it ever again i have it so that's six <laughs> total so one two three i should have uh i should have ordered something last round so i could kick those, <laughs> those pieces out the window yeah and then uh one two three sorry this is a little tedious here holding the book in my other hand <laughs> okay. Are you clutching this on for dear I, life? Yes. Naveen is like in the book at all times. If you don't pay attention, you will mess up. So that was uh, <laughs> one action point, two action point. So I can do a third one. Yep. Okay. I'll I'll be friendly, and I'm gonna order. I'm gonna special order something. Okay. Uh, it is going to be actually the thing that you already have. I don't know how that's friendly, but <laughs> no, it's it's friendly because the thing I'm gonna be booting out technically for the next round is something that you're stocked up on three, and something I'm stocked up on three. Oh, that's nice. So it's gonna go into this window. So we can both say no more to sheet metal. We have sheet metal. And then... Uh, so good to me. <laughs> yeah. You didn't have to do that. Well, because okay. it also affects me. So. <laughs> so... Oh. Yeah. So secretly selfish. I mean, I could technically put it here. No, no, no. That's really fine. Hurt you, you could just leave it there. But since I am a man of my word, I will keep it here. <laughs> wow. Okay. So back to me. I am going to go to the workshop right now. Uh, because... And I'm going to waste a whole action point in doing this. But the reason why is because I'm going to tap this spot which lets me move my apprentice over here so now i don't have to pay that apprentice's wage for the rest of the game nice. i felt like if i didn't do that the turn that i that i hired this person then it would be like i'm wasting money and money is so hard to come by so. yeah yeah that is it that's all i'm doing yeah you'd rather spend your one on advertising getting points than exactly. hiring this person 
Yeah, you got it. Wow. Okay, so now that I have everything I need, uh, I'm going to go to my workshop. So where do we go here? Yep. Uh, so I technically have um, two action points here. So it's because of the Mechaniker. Uh -huh. um, but because this is already preloaded somewhat, I'm not allowed to load again here. So the action I'm going to take is just loading this one uh, with my Clover symbol. I can only load one because there's only one box showing there. And I believe that is the only thing else I can do. Alternatively, you can, oh, not alternatively. In addition, you can spend that second action point if you wanted to, to switch out components between here and there if you needed one additional of something else. The thing is... Um, Just so you know in the future. Yeah. Because if you need one more of these, like... Uh, the birds. The bird, yeah, the birds. Oh, you know what? You're right. Uh, there was a reason why I did this. Okay, so this bird is going to be switched out with this mirror. And now I have two birds and only one mirror. Maybe I should have bought some more mirrors when I went there. Oh, <laughs> okay. Good thing you didn't replace the mirrors. <laughs> yeah, that's it. All right, so back to me. I am now going to go downtown with this... Um, this apprentice. So I'm going to take this spot that's going to get me three action points and I'm just going to use it to get more money because sure. I am a little bit money hungry in Tricarion. And if you played Tricarion before, you are probably um, nodding in agreement. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so that's me. It's back to you. Okay. So I'm going to go to the theater, but I'm going to go backstage with my guy. Ah. Uh, so it's going to be three minus one. Um, so two action two points. Two action points. So I can load uh, both my tricks. So, okay. So I think I'm going to load both my living pianos into two different theaters. Oh, okay. So what I can do is do this into here. Because they're mechanical actions, the mechanical uh, icon, this mechanical has to be in a circle. So because I did that, I'm creating a linking bonus here. So I get um, either one buck or one fame. Uh, I think I'll take one buck. One buck? Yeah. All right. There yeah, you go. I don't like the fact that if I take fame, then I'm out in front. You get to advertise for cheaper. I'd rather not have that happen right yeah. now. And okay. in the case of a tie, it uh, inverts. We, uh, we invert. Yeah. And then I will bring this one out over here and load it into a different theater. And I have to load these tricks into two different theaters. I cannot perform diamond in the same theater because yep. it's like, I pulled a rabbit out and then- The audience is gonna throw tomatoes at you. <laughs> I did like, it again. <laughs> what are you doing? Why are yeah. you doing it again? <laughs> so uh, another linking bonus here, uh, I will take another coin. And I believe that's it. So it's my modifier was three total yeah. actions minus one. So uh, that's me. Perfect. All right, so for my last uh, character here, I'm going to the dark alley. This is the first time uh, we're visiting the Dark Alley. Yeah. So I'm going to go right there. It's my Magician, so 3 plus 2 is 5 action points. And I'm just going to spend them all on special assignment cards because this is the best part about the game. <laughs> just kidding, not about the game. But this is one of the big reasons why I think everybody should play with the Dark Alley expansion because they're awesome. Yeah. So my first special assignment card costs 1 action point and each additional one is 2 action points each. So I can, I can get 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. If I turn in my Tricarion shard, because of this current prophecy, that's going to give me additional two action points. Mm -hmm. So then I can get one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Four total special assignment cards. It's a lot. And uh, it's great because it's really the only way for us to go to the theater three times because you only start with a hand of two theater cards. Right. So let's see what we have face up. Oh, this is nice. I can set a downtown die to a face of my choice yeah. and re-roll another one. You like going there. I do. <laughs> you go there a lot. <laughs> but I think I'm going to take the topmost of the theater uh, deck. This just says I can set up the trick even if the performance card has no free slots. Okay. You just put the trick in an unused uh, spot. Let's see. This says, when you perform, you receive plus one fame for each of your own tricks while other players receive minus one fame for each of theirs. So I'll take that one. That's so I get good. two more cards. Uh, you can only take from the topmost uh card of the deck, so I'm, I'm unable to look through those, unfortunately. Oh my gosh, this one allows me to do a reschedule action, but I can move an opponent's trick instead. Don't do that. Don't do that. <laughs> that's cr That's insane. Well, the thing that's nice about these is it gets you an additional um, action point. I will take that one. Three, oh. and then I get one more. Rude. So this says, instead of moving the trick, you may remove it from the performance card and immediately receive that trick's yields. And for the last one, I'm gonna, I am going to take this downtown one because that sounds like it'll come uh, in handy later on. And so this says, you may learn a trick from any category regardless of the die, as long as it's not an X. And the learn trick action costs you one less action point. So these are nice. Oh, I love the special assignment cards. I should probably go there. You should probably go there. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> All right, so that's it. All yep. of our, uh, everybody's out? Yeah, that's it. Okay, 
So we're not going to have a performance phase because there are no magicians in the front of the theater. Yeah. So we're skipping that entirely and going into end of round stuff. First, sure. you pay your wages. So uh, I have to pay four. So two plus two. I don't have to pay for that apprentice anymore. Right. So there's my five. Take okay. Back and one. I pay two and one for three. My, uh, my characters are expensive. Yes. I better not hire anybody else. So speaking of characters, let's take them back. Okay. All right. So we're going into round three. Yeah, there's a couple things I need to get cleaned up here. Uh, namely, uh, the orders have to come in. Yes. Okay, so this gets so booted out. So goodbye, metal sheet. Goodbye. So these performance cards now get moved. This is the final round where we can perform that specific theater, uh, which is, I guess, mainly directed at me. Yeah. But although you have one there too. One. And then now we have our first intermediate level one, which is the Grand Megorian. Wow, okay. And so this just has different, uh, more complicated configurations of mm -hmm. trick markers. You can, you can create linking bonuses in cooler ways, I suppose, as they advance. Uh, we're moving into round three. Yeah, the poster comes off. And so does the prophecy. And yes. so now, we, if you advertise, your apprentices are worth an additional action point. Interesting. Uh, just so you know, for the next round, if this doesn't move, when you set up a specifically spiritual trick, so that's what that symbol is there, you get an additional two fame. Wow. So that is nice for neither of us. <laughs> <laughs> we don't really care about that one. So, I mean, that might be a good opportunity for you to move this around. Yeah. Or if we're both happy at net neutral nothing, then just leave it. Net neutral nothing. Net neutral nothing. So would you like to roll the dice? Uh, sure. And then we do have to relocate these. Yes. You are now... Oh, that's nice for you. That is nice. That's Although, why when I created those links, I purposely did not take uh, fame because I wanted to be able to advertise because of the prophecy this round, it gets me one extra action point. Although you get an extra action point anyway. Yeah, so I'd like to have three. Because of your mecha. Oh, yeah. <laughs> it's plus one. Yes. To your plus one. Oh, blank X's. You can't hire anybody. You can't unless you re-roll the die. X's are not, uh, you know, set in stone. You can re-roll them. You can still reset the face. But it costs action points. Correct. <laughs> that is the, the only thing. Spend. So do the dueling magicians, please. Okay. So oh, the outskirts. Dang it. Oh. I needed that not to happen. Even worse. For who? Me. Yeah. For okay. you. Sorry. <laughs> oh, this is interesting. It's Ooh. Thursday or Sunday. Oh gosh. Um. All right. There you go. Very nice. Ah. Uh, this is what it feels like to not go first. <laughs> yeah. Are you going to advertise, Naveen? Uh, yes, I will advertise. So I will not. I will pay one buck to get two fame now. Yep. Because we need to inch towards that 16 mark so that we can get those level two tricks. I'm still trying to perform my level one tricks. We're clearly not But as you perform them, you, you gain fame and you get closer. Because once you get to that 16, then the tricks get kind of uh, more lucrative. So yeah. trying to trying to slowly inch my way there. All right, shall we assign? Uh, yes. Well, you said you're not going to advertise. No, I'm not advertising. Okay. It's too expensive. Yeah. All right, ready? Uh, yes. I gotta All right. Sure this. Let's the do right this. The right people going to the right spots. I'm worried. I'm worried. The further and further you get uh, in this game, the more it's like, ah, are we, are we, uh, I'm ready are we doing the right thing here? Shall we? Yes. Okay. Downtown, Dark Alley, and Market Row. Oh, not interesting. In that order. I'm just Market Row and the theater. Which is a bunch of theater. I'm clearly performing this round, so, and that is nice seeing that you're not performing. Ooh. You know, these two day options are pretty terrible, so. so well, Sunday's nice. Huh? I know, Sunday is nice, but like, had you, you get to go first, so had you taken Sunday, then I would mm, have to go on Thursday. Of Thursday. Who cares about Thursday? Uh, okay, so <laughs> the only competition I see is Market Row, so I'm gonna send my manager to the Market Row. We're nice. gonna go to this two spots. So I did put this in here. So I definitely know I want to buy that. Okay, I'm going to buy one of these that can, is going to cost me two. So that's for one point. Okay. Uh, you know what, I'm going to, I'm going to spend one less though. I'm going to on that. So I'm going to spend okay. uh, only one because I'm uh, two. Okay. <laughs> Wait, how many action points do you have I'm, here? I have four action points, okay. two plus two. So one so, is the first purchase. Yes. So that costs two, but I'm going to spend one action point to okay. give me a discount of one. Okay, perfect. So now you have two action points left. Two action points left, yes. <laughs> and so what I'll do is I'm going to um, I'm going to put out an order for um, one of these. Ah, uh, right here. Dang it! I wish it was the thing that I needed, but it's not. <laughs> and then I will put it here. Okay. 
And then I have one more action point, so I should probably buy a plank of wood, is what I'm thinking. And I am going to buy, for my last action, a plank of wood. So okay. now I have a total of three because it's in this area here. You have a ton of components. I, I Yeah. Oh my gosh. I gotta see if I can do anything with them. Imagine that trunk, that magician's trunk. <laughs> <laughs> the manager's managing it. <laughs> All right, you done? Yeah, that's it. I'm okay, five well, bucks. it doesn't really matter what order I go in now that I know you're not going to the theater. So I'm just going to send my apprentice then to the market row. It's just one action point. I don't have a Tricarion shard, so I'm pretty much limited to that. So with that, I'm going to um, order this. Here's some rope. Yeah, level two rope. And let's kick out... Gosh, it doesn't matter now at this mm -hmm. point. I'm just going to kick this out. Dead I would, would kick this out, but I'm worried that I might need another one later <laughs> yeah, down the line. Yeah. So let's just do that. Cool. And that's me, so it goes back to you. Okay, so I'm gonna go downtown. So I have three plus one. Okay, so I have uh, four action points. So what I'll do is, for one of them, I'm gonna roll this three and see if I can roll a six. One. Oh no, three is the minimum, huh? Uh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, an X, I could've rolled an X. <laughs> so that's one of them. Uh, I guess I will unfortunately, I will unfortunately take uh, only four coins. So I'm gonna turn this into that. All right. Two, three, four. There you go. Oh my cash. You're a little bit uh, wealthier. Wealthier, yes. So that was uh, that was my four action points. All right. So back to me. Uh, I'm kind of delaying my decision making here. I'm just gonna go and take a Sunday slot. Sunday. Good night, magician. That's all I do for my turn. Back to you. Okay. So I'll go to the dark alley, and so I have one. Uh, plus one, so that's two. The Mechaniker is three action points, and then because the Prophecy is whoever advertised gets, into... gets an additional. So I get four total action points. Yeah. Uh, so I know definitely I'm going to want to take this card here. This one allows me to set any die as oh, long as it's not an X. That's so nice. So that costs one action point. And this is Fame and Fortune. You also gain fame equal to the amount of money on the chosen die minus one. Wow. I'll take that. <laughs> no. <laughs> so that's uh, two, three. And that's then... it. So for your last action point, by the way, this is interest. After choosing a bank die, roll it roll it once before setting it to X. Add the rolled amount from the supply to the money that you take. And that action costs one less action point. That's fantastic. Yeah. Um, for your last action point, you can rotate the prophecy if you don't like this one. Yeah, uh, what is the, uh, the next prophecy? So then? this one states... All components cost two coins when you buy them. So if it's a level one component, it's still two coins. Level three component, which is that, is two coins instead Ooh. of three. Let's do it. Let's rotate. No! <laughs> you foiled my plan. Why? You wanted that? I might have been doing something oh, with a spiritual trick next round. Nice. You stinker. <laughs> well, that's good. <laughs> Are I you mean, done? Yeah, that's it. That's all. All right. Yeah, that's I'm going to take my last two turns back to back then. And I'm essentially Ooh. just going to Scary. the... Uh, the theater. theater. Yeah. So let's send this uh, engineer back here first. So that's going to get me one action point to spend. Uh, when I send this person there, that's also one action point, but I can spend this card for an additional one. You can, or you... So for a total of three? Yeah. But mm -hmm. then that card's out of the game for you, right? It's out of the game no matter what. No matter what. Okay. Okay, I think I need to put on my glasses. Ah, that is better. Mm. Okay, I'm going to relocate. I think I'm going to try to bail from this theater over here. Yeah, I'm just gonna take this reschedule action to move this trick from here to here. So it is a uh, escape trick. So that still has to go in this circle. And no linking bonus, but I don't really want to perform this theater. And it's about to go off at the end of this round. So I don't want to lose those tricks. And you don't have any more characters left. Uh, no, I'm out. So it just goes back to me. And I'm going to go ahead and place uh, my assistant back here. And technically, it would also give me just one action point. But because I have my uh, special assignment card, I'm not going to use it for its text. I'm going to use it for that ex that extra action point mm -hmm. in the bottom right hand corner. So I get uh, two, two action points, which I'm going to use to load both of these tricks. And so they're the same two tricks that I loaded earlier. So they're both that linking symbol. So I'm going to put them here in the Grand Megorian. The first one I'm going to place right there. And then I'm going to place the second one right here. So it creates two links, actually, one with the neutral marker and then one with my uh, my other marker right there. So this is also a Tricarion Shard bonus. So I'm going to go ahead and get uh, one Tricarion Shard. And then because I'm trying to level up to get to that level 16 trick uh, threshold, I think I'm just going to take them both in points. So it's going to be two, two fame for that little maneuver. That's it. That is the end of the that phase. Cool. So now we're going to go into the performance phase. But before I do, I'm finally going to uh, enact my, my magician ability. 
And so this says one time before the performance phase, I can move over a trick from one theater to another one. So I'm gonna go ahead and, and say goodbye to that theater and oh, move boy. over here because I don't wanna perform that one. It's not, it's not that great. I'm sorry. <laughs> I mean, there's nothing I can do about it. There's no, I don't have a special card that says stop everything. <laughs> so, Hold on. Yeah, no. Okay. <laughs> what can I do? All right, so I'm performing on a Sunday and I'm gonna perform this theater right here, the Grand Magorian. So the first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna get the yields for both of these tricks. And so because I'm performing on a Sunday, it's going to be uh, one additional fame and one additional money for each. So my burning mummy gets me uh, two, so then three fame, one, two, three, and two money, so that means I get three, one, two, three. And then my uh, barricaded barrels is one and one, so that would mean two and two. So one, two, and two fame, one, two. So there, now I'm at that 16 um, fame threshold, which is nice. And then I get points for each link. And so I believe there are two of them. One, two, so that's two more fame. One, two. And then uh, I get stuff for my specialists that are in the back, backstage, there you go. So I have my engineer, which gets me uh, one Tricarion shard and my assistant who gets me two more fame. One, two. And finally, I get the reward of the theater, which is three, three money. So I'm gonna turn these two in and take a five. And that's it. These two now come off and they go into my supply and the performance phase is done. Well, that is not good for me. Uh, oof, man, that was- Sorry, well I had to done. bail. Yeah, you bailed on that theater, oof. Okay, that, so I lose that trick, that's done. Because that in a two player game, uh, this theater gets bumped off. Yes. It doesn't go into these sections. So, so. let's uh, pay our characters. Sure, yeah. So, so two, four, I have to pay four. I have to pay three. Two, three, four. Thank you. And then we'll get our characters back. One, two, three, and four. And then yes, the theaters move. So this goes out, and you already got your trick marker yeah. back. Uh -huh. So this, this theater goes out. Uh, this one goes over, and that's, that's a high risk. <laughs> and then we have another Grand Magorian. Ah, that's an interesting shape. Okay. So uh, I, I might consider moving these theaters here, just so we can, we can see them at all times. And then when we're ready to load them, then we can move them into the top down. What do you think? Uh, sure. One, two, and three. Just so you can always see uh, how many tricks are on what theater. This mm -hmm. is the order. This is the one that's at risk of getting uh, bumped off. Now we're gonna move to the fourth round. Uh, this goes out. We have a new prophecy. And this is the one that says that all of the components are uh, cost two. Two, yep. Two money, no matter what they are. So for the next round, this says uh, during the performance phase, the performing player's yield modifier applies to all other players in the performance instead of their own. Mm. So that's, uh, huh, that's not great, but I guess maybe that's just like a nice round to not perform. <laughs> yeah, maybe. Maybe we use it ex as, as an excuse to take a break. This also gets discarded because we don't get to keep uh, special assignment cards once they've been used. Yep. And uh, our orders arrive. So these go out and these go in. That's right. Now we have some stuff, some advanced stuff looks like. So we're now in round four. Mm -hmm. The initiative order is the same. Right. So Naveen, you are still up there. Yep. And uh, would you like to roll the downtown sure. dice? Let's see what the dueling magician card can have in store for us. Okay, so ooh. Ooh, we've been rolling a lot of the six money. And X's. Yeah. Okay, so here we go. Perfect. Okay, so we need to draw this. Okay. What you got? So the last two here. Okay, uh, wow. Oops. There you go. The book ends here. Okay. Uh, Saturday and Sunday, the theater is closed. What? And no. uh, these last two here. So the dark alley is nice. The dark alley where? It's nice. Yeah, oh, so the last two. That is last, nice. Yeah. That is nice. This is the one. <sighs> oh, wow. Well, downtown is nice too. And yeah, I was... Oof. Is it okay. time to go downtown? That is a question. Okay, so now it's my decision if I want to advertise, I will do that. So it's going to cost me one coin. Okay. I'll put this in oh. here. <laughs> and I uh, go up to one, two, okay. So now you're at uh, 13, so 13. you're close. If you want to get that, that 16 fame, I know you're looking at that trick. Oh, I didn't take my cards off. Yeah. And I didn't put these back. All my stuff is all over the place. 
So I'm not advertising because I I have 12 money and I need a lot of it Yeah. for some future planning. All right, so planning phase. <laughs> Good luck. Thank you. This is, uh, this is, it's getting tough. Okay, ready? Uh, yes, I am ready. All right. <laughs> oh my gosh. Oh, this is, this is stressful. We're, in a, yeah. we're kind of in that like mid game stress. I'm stressed right now for sure. <laughs> this is tough. Okay. I made some boo-boos for sure. Okay. So what is your plan right now? Now that we're like slightly uh, getting to halfway. Okay, so I only have five money and I'm seeing an opportunity to get six money and I'm gonna go first. So, well, let's just reveal and then we can kind of go over the plan. Okay, ready? Okay, yeah. One, two, three. So I'm kind of visiting the same places I've been visiting. Nothing too There are only four, five locations. So <laughs> I know. <laughs> it is gonna be a little bit of rinse and repeat. So uh, seeing as it's not gonna be efficient if I go to the theater right now, I unfortunately will probably have to concede that to you. Yay. Yeah. <laughs> I think good. there's an order of things, right? Yeah, I need to go get some stuff, load it, then go to the theater. But I can't just go to the theater because if not, then I'd be inefficient because right. the living piano is not loaded. So I have to preload that. So the first thing I will do is I will send uh, this piece out here. So that's going to be two, three, uh, plus my one-time mechanicer. So that's four total action points. Nice. Uh, so for the first action, I'm, gonna, I'm actually going to use uh, what it says here. You also gain fame equal to the amount of money on the chosen die minus one. So, wow. So I'm going to choose this six die, take six money. Okay. Turn it to an X and then get five fame for doing that. All, one, two, three, four, five. All of my work oh. just for you to woo because of one card. <laughs> yeah. And then uh, I have one extra action point here, but um, I don't think I can use it, so. All right, so back to me. Um, I think I'm going to claim the theater then while I can. I'm just performing, I'm not loading anything. I don't have anything to load. So I'm just gonna take this Friday spot sure. right there. Uh, yep. Mm -hmm. And then now it's back to you. Okay, so now I will go to the workshop. So I have uh, two action points. Uh, one action point, I am definitely gonna load this one up. So it is the diamond and we get one, two, three. Nice. Okay, so that's one action point. My second action oh, point. Oh, are you with this one? You gotta go to the workshop. Uh, yes, sorry, yes, I have to go to the workshop, thank you. <laughs> And uh, I'm going to have one extra action point that I'm not going to be using right now because uh, I like where all my equipment is right now. All right. Yep. I'm going to go to the market row. And so this is going to be two plus one, so three action points. I'm going to buy um, two different items. So my first action point, I'm going to buy these, three of these. Okay. So that's going to be six money, five, six. So can I have three of the rope, please? Uh, yeah, three rope. For my second action point, I'm going to buy one more of these. So if you can buy it, if you can pass me one more of those, please. Okay, so two more. Uh, yeah, so two more. Here's five. So one, two, and three. I'll just rest this on top. Thank you. Perfect. Yeah. And so for my third action point, I'm going to uh, regular order, I suppose, a level three trick. And it's going to be that like ghost-like figure. Okay. There you and go. what are we going to ditch? Since you were nice to me, I'm going to be nice to you. And I'm just going to get rid of the level one. I feel like by this point, if we needed it, we would have gotten more, right? <laughs> Ah, maybe. So, <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. We shall see. Yeah. So that's it for me. Those are all three of my action points. Okay, cool. I'm suddenly short, short on cash. So I am going to go to the theater and I'm going to load my tricks with my magician and I must go uh, here. So I unfortunately I'm going to get the modifier, which is not good for me. Okay, so since I know that the modifiers over here are going to net me zero, uh, I'm going to use the reschedule action. So, so. let's get these uh, theaters yeah. in their spot Where so that belong. we can get a nice uh, tight shot for you. Sure. There you go. All right. So go for it. Okay. So that reschedule action, I'm going to put this right in here. Good job. Taking away my link. <laughs> yeah. So that's that's one action. Uh, I have a total of four action points. Okay. So that's one. Uh, the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to bring this uh, rabbit from the out of the top hat. And I'm gonna place it here. Cause it's the eyeball symbol. Yeah, so the eyeball symbol's inside. That's gonna create a shard link and then a, a link between these two like type symbols there. There's two links. Oh, it doesn't create a shard. It would be like that if you want the shard. I guess you have to choose one or the other. And so yeah, I'm sorry, yes, you're right. This is a, this is a better configuration than you for helping <laughs> me out there. So because these are uh, like type symbols in here, that creates a link yep. as well as I get a shard. So would you like a one money or a point uh, for your linking bonus? Mm, I did get a lot of money in that last round. So I think I'll take the point. Oh, okay. Points are tough to come by. 
All right, so All then right. Uh, that was two actions, and then now I can go ahead and put out this here. So this is not allowed to go into this theater yep. uh, because it's already there, and we already know not to go there <laughs> because of my modifier. So I should probably try to get this in. So I will create a link by doing that because I have two gear symbols yep. touching. Uh, so then I will take... I'll take a coin. A coin? You want to be just well, right Well, because you're going to perform and get points. So I don't know. It's it's. I can't really figure out what I need to do here. So I'll I'll take a coin. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Perfect. So that's every all your action points. Uh yeah. I think I have. I think I technically had one extra, but because I'm out of this type, I'm not allowed to put it out. So that's it. All right. So then uh, back to me. I'm going to go to the workshop. I have two action points to spend, and I'm just going to use both of them on uh, loading my barricaded barrels and my burning mummy. Okay. So that is going to be two and two. So my burning my barricaded barrels, sorry, is now loaded as well as my burning mummy okay. since they were both emptied. Right. All right, so, uh, oh, and you're out of workers. I'm out of workers, yeah, I need okay. to get another worker. So my apprentice then is gonna go to the dark alley where I am going to get some of these, my favorite cards. Yeah, yeah. So I have three action points to spend, which means I can get two of them. Mm -hmm. Ooh, but I wanna rotate this. I'm going to spend a Dracarion shard. Okay. One of my my uh, really valuable Dracarion shards. <laughs> to, to rotate it. To rotate it. So sure. I'm gonna, it's going to get me one more action point. So I'm just going to rotate these just so now, like that. So now you have three actions. So, yeah. So now I have three action points. And I'm going to spend them on two special assignment cards. I am pretty low on um, money. So this is nice. What does it say? So it's interest. It says, after choosing a bank die, I roll the die once before setting it to an X. And then I can add the rolled amount. <sighs> To, to the amount of money I get, so that's nice. Yeah, that's nice. really good. I'm gonna take that, and let's see what this is. Hypnotic motivation. You immediately receive the hired, oh, character. You may place an assignment card from your hand below it and place it during this place character's phase. Whoa. That's probably good for you. That would be exactly what I need. I'm gonna leave it there. Okay. For you, <laughs> just, nice. just for you, because I have, I have so many characters anyway. <laughs> yeah. yeah, that would be so, really nice. Then my second card is gonna be the street performance. So instead of moving the trick, I can remove it from the performance card and immediately receive that trick's yield. So that is if I take a reschedule action. Sure. Festival of Magic. After the performance phase, all remaining tricks are removed from the theater and their yields are paid to their owners. Wow, that's just like uh, everything. Everything gets removed. Yeah, just, you wipe, just wipe it off. Wipe the theaters. That's all, kind of all unhappy. Theaters. Yeah, it says the theater. And you just score it. Yes, for what it is. It. I guess so. That's <laughs> that's kind of like a, a happiness card. Yeah, that saves <laughs> you some uh, time. Yeah, but that's it. Okay. I'm done. We are done. We're moving on to the performance, performance. phase. Okay, so, so what are you going to perform? So I, I don't have a choice. Yeah. I have to perform here in the Riverside Theater. Right. So first things first is I'm, I'm performing on Friday, so there are no additional bonuses or, or minus points. Mm -hmm. uh, and it's just going to be one each of my tricks. Sure. So it's a total of three fame. So this goes to 23 mm -hmm. and one, two, three money. Nice. So I'm going to put back two and take a five. Sure. All right. Uh, I, you took away some stuff. So uh, yeah, I, I don't think there are any more links. No link bonuses. No link bonuses, right. Uh, this is a little bit of a sad performance. No link bonuses, no specialists in the backstage area. So then I get one money. Nice. <laughs> I basically sent my magician over there just because I was so afraid of losing those. I mean, nobody came to my last performance in the last round, <laughs> so <laughs> I didn't. <you> know. <laughs> uh, I didn't really get much for that. But that's it. That is the end of the what was that? The fourth round. Fourth round. Oh yeah. Oh my gosh. Yeah, we have three rounds left. What are we gonna do? Yeah, we're pushing. Pay our wages. Okay. Uh, um, three for me. So uh, can I just get um, two back? Yes, I have to pay four. Uh oh, I don't know if I'm earning enough money. To you did pick up that card though, right? The one. money card. I did. That's so, true. I think. Uh, so let's get those you're going. characters back. These since they were well paid. <laughs> yes. And our assignment cards. And then now we're going to rotate the theaters. Riverside goes out. Ouch. That was our last Riverside theater. Yes. Now the ones that that are going to be here are going to be the the exciting ones. Okay. So this is our first Magnus Pantheon, and this Ooh. is the most advanced. Look at look at that configuration. It's looking good. It's pretty. And that's that. You got to perform this or else it's going bye-bye. Yeah. Our order comes in, just the okay. one right there. Yep. And then we uh, the are now alley. in the fifth round. This goes out. 
And we do, we have this, which is nice because it was what I was planning. All what was it again? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I think it's, I think it's when you place a trick out onto a theater of the spiritual type, which neither of us have had yet. Yes. Then you get two points. So and you have to I'm... acquire it to then load it, to then put it out there. Yes. It's a process. It's a, it is a process, but I think it's only, yeah, it's you immediately uh, get two fame just for setting up the trick, which is placing it into a theater. Yeah, not bad. And just in case you're wondering, this next one here uh, says that all components that are in the order area can be bought. Oh, that nice. Round, yeah. Just with a buy action. So that's kind of meh because we have done all of our Yeah, all right our now buying. most of the buying is, is done, but if it came a little earlier, that would have been really nice. Yes. Would you like to roll the dice? Uh, yes. And Let's draw the next card. It. If okay. you draw the card, I'll put these up. Sure. Okay. The next card says this. Ooh, it's like that upside down. Oh, oh wow. Downtown is Downtown never is looking scarce. Never wanting us to get the nice spots. Go ahead. Yeah. Wow. Everything's looking scarce. Oh, this is a tough round. This. Oh, is it? Are all the good stuff out? Every single good thing is out. Wow. Wow. This is not the one that we had last time, right? No, no. Oh, wow. This is a nasty one. They should put an asterisk one. on yeah. that card. Initiative doesn't change. Uh, we are now in the fourth round. Would you like to advertise? Uh, yeah, let's do it. So I'll pay a coin. Okay. One coin for two fame. Two fame. It's a difference to change right now. still not paying because that is still expensive. Yeah, and you only have three, three four coins right now? Right. Okay. So let's, uh, let's assign. All right, ready? Uh, yes. Mine is pretty straightforward, I think. I'm taking a big risk. Okay. Big risk? <laughs> yeah, depending on where you go. Okay. I'm making some assumptions based off of what I see. <sighs> sure. <laughs> yeah, hopefully you don't go here. Okay, ready? Okay, yes. Yeah, One, two, up. three, flip. Yes! Yeah. Well, I can't oh allow these things to just go away. I figured. I figured you had so many tricks over there, you would need to go to the theater. And so I placed two um, downtown cards here, but had you... Been going. Then yeah, you would have. One been of them to... would be for not. That's right. So so I'm gonna go here to the workshop and just load this one thing. <laughs> Unfortunately, it's sad. It's not sad. You gotta do what you gotta do. Yeah. I wanna move these theaters over here in case you're uh, curious. Yes. Uh, I do events. technically have an extra action point because of the mechaniker, uh, and I'm not using it. So I I don't know if I'm using this guy's ability very well here. <laughs> But it is what it is. I need to load these things up so that when I go to the theater, something happens. So uh, that's me. This is a really hard game. It's hard right like, now. Wow. Really hard. <laughs> and we're playing with the Dueling Magicians thing, so you never know which spots are available. Yes. So this is really hard. It yes. does require a ton of planning and sometimes things to go to go your way. Yeah. All right, so I'm going to go to the my first downtown spot with... Uh, my engineer and so i'm going to place it here for three action points total sure my special assignment card says take no risks before you take this action i can set one downtown die to the result result of my choice and re-roll another one mm. so i need a specific uh category of trick that's not my specialty because you can always take your specialty trick if it's not showing on the die but unfortunately um that is my specialty yeah, yeah. so i'm going to set this die to the spiritual one mm. And, uh, oh gosh, I just realized I'm not going to take advantage no, of this. No, no. Oh, well, I was so proud of it and everything. Uh, and then it says I can re-roll another one. So let's just see. Let's see if we can get lucky. Five. Oh, five okay. is better than four. Yeah, definitely. And uh, so then with these uh, three action points, I'm just going to take a spiritual trick. Sure, do you know which one? I, it's oh, one. thank you. It's a level 16, yes. Yeah. And so it's going to be this one, the... Floating table, Ooh, you which have all the stuff. I do. It's this thing, three rope, three of these, and oh, yeah. three of these. Yeah, so. dry on that, huh? I'd been planning. I've been planning forever. Yeah, good plan. And we're going to, let's make that one the clover. Sure. There you go. Okay, very cool. So uh, I'm going to go with Thank my... <laughs> I'm going to go with my manager backstage. Uh, she gets me two points of movement or action plus zero, so two points total. Uh, I might as well okay. load what I have here. So uh, let's get... Yes, Where are you going to go? Which so theater? Def well, you know I'm performing that last theater because it's the most dire and critical one. It's going to go bye-bye. So this is an eyeball uh, illusion. So I'm going to place it right in here. So I created a link right nice. through there. So as a linking bonus... Uh, a fame or a money? Mm, let's go uh let's go fame okay let's go fame perfect okay cool so that's good so when i perform that it'll be nice yeah okay you uh, have one more i have one more so because of that uh i'm gonna put this one out here into this theater uh and the reason is um might as well <laughs> so, <laughs> well it can't go in either it can't go so. exactly yeah so go i'll go here 
creating another link. So let's do fame again. Fame? Let's just go hard fame. Okay. All right, we're tied. All right. You're going to go first so next we're round, Monique. 23. Yeah, yeah, I might. I you, will. You will. Yeah. I will. That because is nice. I'm going to score all that. And that is nice. So you're going to be able to advertise and all that stuff. All right. Well, I'm going to go back to the downtown. Sure. So uh, that's three action points, and my special assignment card says interest. So this is the one where I can choose a bank die. So I'm going to choose this one. So you get five. And now I can roll it once before setting it to the X, and I can add the, that amount of money. X. Four. Wow, nine. So I'm going to take nine, nine money. Oh, this take coins action costs you one less action point. Do so you have one extra action point? We're going to forgo that. Technically, yeah. I could have used one action point to re-roll the other die mm -hmm. if I wanted to be greedy. But we're just going to say that I forgo that. Sure. And uh, I'll take so the nine. Nine, though, yeah. So here's five, ten. I'll give back a one. Ooh. All right, back to you. Uh, well, uh, let's go back to the theater, and we're declaring on Friday night. Come and see my show. <laughs> Come see it. Everyone's going to show up. Come to the uh, the Grand Magorian. Yeah, I would watch you... Uh, Pull a rabbit from your hat and play the piano. It's a living oh, piano. I get it's a living piano, so living it plays piano. itself. Yes. Okay, that's cool. Uh, all right, so I'm gonna just go to the workshop then for uh, one action point. Oh gosh, this costs two action points. Mm, shard I'm required time. to spend my last shard. Yeah, those those are brutal. I wasn't expecting to do that. Yeah. So I'm loading this two two trick markers is what I'm allowed for that trick. But at sure. least now I have some stuff to do that is true uh, and then for my final my final uh character is gonna go to the dark alley for three action points so i'm just gonna take i think i'm just gonna take uh two of these probably so that's that? a festival of magic that's oh, just yeah. like um you know just blow it up candy for everybody yeah. or <laughs> uh and then this is durable components at the end of the performance phase you may return one of your performed markers to its trick card instead of discarding it oh that's, that's nice fantastic that's great so i took that one that's it a uh, new twist. You may set up the same trick on the same oh. performance card for a second time. <laughs> I could really like, uh, yeah, that would be a well, really nice one for me. it's available if you well, want to go. I'm not in the dark round. alley right now, but maybe, maybe later. Yeah, it'll be there next round. We shall see. Uh, that's it. I think that's it for the both of us. I think so. Yeah, all right. assigned all your workers. I have as well. Performance phase. Okay, time to perform. You are performing. Uh, I'm assuming you're performing this one. I am definitely performing that one, yeah. All right, so you are on Friday. I am. And so, so no modifiers. You Friday. just get the stuff for both of those. Uh, so one, two, three, four fame. So living piano gets me one and then the rabbit is uh four. one two three four okay and then i get one two bucks there you go two money just enough to pay my people uh you also have two links uh yes one two which means you get two more fame one two yep. look at you climbing up the ranks Working here it. uh you have your manager backstage yep. who gives you an additional three money yep. so uh you can give me a five i can give you these two um yeah there you go. Thank you. Thank Such you. a gentle exchange. <laughs> and then finally, you get three more money. <laughs> Might as well. Suddenly you're raking in the dough. I don't want to have to deal with money anymore in this game. <laughs> <laughs> I don't right. want to go to downtown to get money. There are your trick markers. The Thank performance you. has concluded. Everybody can go home. <laughs> yeah, get out. Now let's pay our wages. This is my least favorite part of the game. Yeah, here. Pay, although they deserve Here's my three. a living wage. So two, four. Here we go. Five minutes towards one. And then let's go ahead and take our characters back. Sure. Two, three, four. Uh, these get discarded yeah, because discarded I cards. used them. Mm -hmm. And then these two go back into my hand. We're going to remove this theater. And this is going to come over the here. The pressure is now mounting. It is. For me to have to perform my own tricks. <laughs> that is because uh, <laughs> we're going into the sixth round. This is the second to last round. Yeah, so this is going to move. There we go. Second to last round. Okay, so we realize that we made a little bit of a mistake uh, when we were setting up the, the theaters. Yes. So we seated one a fewer theater. Right. And uh, there's no real way to remedy this because we're already in the most advanced ones. <laughs> yeah. So we're just going to add one more Magnus Pantheon. <laughs> if anyone from Mind Clash is watching, I, I don't, we didn't know if we should go back to the Riverside Theater, but that seemed strange going back going to back. like a. A smaller, so maybe this will just be a little bit more lucrative than it would have been. We'll see. <laughs> I suppose. We shall see. We'll see. Yeah. All right, so finishing a uh, setup here. This goes out, that goes in, mm -hmm. and so that just means that you can buy stuff when it's here, right. which we're, I can guarantee you we're not going to use. Uh, <laughs> My picture is going to come down off the walls. <laughs> because, Tear it off the because walls. Because you are actually now the one out over there. Okay. 
Would you like to roll the die and pass uh, me a magician card oh, so man. that we can see our fate? Okay. Oh, this is oh. like the complete opposite of the last one, except for the theater. The theater is not the greatest. <laughs> yeah, this is slightly happier. Uh, it's just all right, right side. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah, no Saturday, Sunday, unfortunately. No. All right. Ooh. Just like that. Not much money this time around, Monique. We are in the in the penultimate round, and you and I are both at like 23 points. <laughs> yeah. What happened is here? Is that good or is that bad? What did we do <laughs> I can't round? tell. I, there's been some really um, good games where we score pretty high, but... We shall, we shall see. Sure All right. We shall see. Uh, I am going to... I'm now starting player, so I am going to pay yeah, my one... Now that you have money, too. ...money for two fame. Oh, so amazing. now I'm at 25. And you? Um... Three money. It's going to cost you. The way I see it is income wise, I just have to pay three. I think I'm good on all my materials. Okay, yes, I'm gonna pay really three for two fame. I Get your poster know. on that billboard. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> okay, so planning phase. Yes. All right, ready? Uh, yes. Okay, let me place my stuff. Oh, one, right. Two and three. Here we go. Okay. Uh, there and there. All right, Oof. ready to flip? Yeah, let's okay. do it. Okay. I'm a little bit worried here. I don't know that we're going to score that many more points in the oh, last two man. rounds. I made, I made big uh, mistakes early on. Kind of a big, uh, mistakes. big point blunder here. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> we usually score over 100. I don't know what happened. Yeah. Uh, anyway, looks like we are in competition for the theater. Theater, yeah. So I am not performing this round, and I have a feeling I know which theater you are performing at. Mm. So I'm just going to go back here on the Thursday slot. I'm okay. Maybe Friday. Given you Friday. Okay. And uh, the reason why is because I, it gives me an additional action point. Yeah, four loads. For loading stuff. And so the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to load uh, this burning mummy, which is a chain link right there okay. on this left hand uh, theater right there. And then I'm going to put my floating table right here. So this creates two links and mm. a tricarion shard. So let's get the tricarion shard. And because this is a uh, level. 16 trick yep then it's going to be two fame or two points uh per link so i'm going to just do four points just straight points for that and then for my third one it has to be this barricaded barrels which unfortunately is a uh, the chain link symbol mm -hmm. so i don't think it's going to get me any any links for that so i'm just going to put it right here just in case give you some opportunity yeah yeah but the last action point i'm going to move this i'm going to relocate this mm -hmm. just to a different uh a different theater and I guess I'll just go here. I don't get any bonuses for it, but if I happen to perform it, <laughs> my whole point is opening that spot up. So. Yeah, so you can do it again. Yes, okay, so back to you. Okay, back to me. So I will take my uh, my hand and go here. So I have one, two, three, technically four. I am going to learn a new trick, finally. Unfortunately, I played this card, uh, so this is going to cost me a couple points at the end of the game for not having it in possession, because I wasn't sure if you were going to go get a new trick, uh, oh, okay. because you had one more slot in the, in the second to last round. Uh, so basically, I'm just using it for uh, just its action point, I guess. So it's uh, two, three, four, technically five. <laughs> so I'm, okay. And I'm going to learn uh, one of these, uh, the links. And so let's go ahead and... You know what? I might as well actually use this card. So this is Thirst for Knowledge. You may learn a trick from any category, regardless of the dice roll. This learn trick action costs you one action less. Oh, so okay. it's I have four total action, so it's going to be two actions right there. Uh -huh. uh, I will use this shard as my third one in, in the future. So I'm going to have five total actions, so I can take two different actions here. And so I'm going to go ahead and get Zigzag Lady. Where are you? Zigzag Lady. Zigzag Lady. It was a long it was a long way to get to this, but I finally <laughs> got it. Nice. Oh, yeah, so it's it's... A level two. It's not. It's not the most glamorous of tricks, but uh, it's here now. <laughs> okay. And that's what matters. <laughs> that's what matters. Totally. Zigzag lady has arrived. She has. Okay. So uh, that is there, and then I will be spending a tricarion shard to get me a third action. Uh, so I have two left over plus the shard, and I'm gonna hire this assistant. I should have done this a long, long long time ago this is part of the mistakes that i was talking about so uh i don't get this yet but i will put it on the board right there so in the next round i can use it to deploy all right so back to me i'm going to go back to the theater and that's going to get me three more um action points to load i'm going to load the rest of my tricks wow. so 
Okay, well, first I'm going to do the floating table here again right. because I, I vacated that it. spot so that I could do it again, just like that. So that'll get me another to carry on shard nice. and another four points. So one, two, three, four. Mm -hmm. And then I'm going to load my burning mummy, which is the link, the uh, chain looking type. Mm -hmm. And it has to go here. So I'm going to put it right there. It doesn't create a link yet. But now it will, because mm. I'm going to place my barricaded barrels right, wow. right, wait, what am I doing? <laughs> it's a link, it's a link trick, or a, yes. a, a, an escape trick, there we so, go. just yeah. like that. And I'm going to place this right here, so that's going to be another point. Wow. So now I'm at 34, and back to you. Okay, so uh, I'm going to go to the workshop and load up these tricks here. So we're going to go ahead and get this loaded up with one of these symbols. Nice. Okay, and then the second one uh, is going to be this one, and I'm going to load up, I got to get a new symbol. So let's make it a spade, and then I get to load up three tricks for the zigzag lady. Okay, that goes there. All right, so I too will go to the workshop uh, with my two action points. I'm just going to load the floating table, because let's not waste time on the other tricks mm -hmm. at this point, right? Yeah, totally. <laughs> We're scrambling. Yeah. We are scrambling. Well, you, got, you got some... Uh... Yeah, I don't know. It's interesting because you, you're loaded up on two theaters, but you can only perform once. I have that festival card. Oh, you have the festival card. Yeah, I'm hoping to collect big oh. later. I don't think it's going to score me 80 points or 70 points. I don't know <laughs> no. what's going on here. No. But uh, you're out of people? Oh, no, no, you have one more. Well, we're going to go ahead and, uh, wow, we're going to perform. <laughs> okay. Wow. Yep. All right, I'm just going to go to the dark alley. So that's definitely going to be two cards uh, for me. I'm going to take this one. That's one, that's one that lets me take the hired person immediately. And, oh, well, let's see what we have. Uh, as you learn this trick, you may choose to return another trick to the Belgard residence. If you do, place all trick markers and the symbol marker from the return trick on the new one. <gasps> I'm taking this one. That is two, two downtown uh, cards. Mm -hmm. That's that. That's it for me. That's right. it for you. We're going to perform. All right. Oh, well, you're going to perform. I'm going to perform, yes. Okay. So uh, I'm assuming in, you're performing this one? I am definitely performing that one, yeah. Okay, so what are your yields? Uh, let's see, so... So it's, it's clover and diamond. Yeah, so it's one and one, and then three and one. So I get four points. Four points. Which one, is not good. One, two, three, four. And uh, two coins. Two coins. All right, there you go. Two coins. How many links do we have here? Uh, one. Yep. So you get an additional point, so 35 goes to 36. Yeah. Over here. Hey, you've made it to the red zone. <laughs> yeah. You can now learn a level 36 trick. It's kind of late. Yeah. <laughs> and then, do you, you don't have anybody backstage, and no. so you get two fame. One, two. Mm -hmm. For the card. These right. go back to you. Thank you. And that's it. We are <laughs> entering it. the final round with, twin, with 34 and 36 points. Yeah. Naveen. <laughs> Normally we're rounding about 80 or something. What's going on? Uh, yeah. I don't All know. Right. Get I, your characters back. Let's let's you get a see. new character though. That's nice. So I do have to pay uh, three coins. This so. is going out. We're gonna have uh, these three three Magnus Pantheon uh, theater cards because we admit we didn't do that one. Yeah, we properly. made that mistake there. So I have to pay three coins uh, for my. Oh income. yes, yep. so we have to pay. Here's five. Can I, I have get two back. Sure, I'm also doing five and one. Here's your two. I paid my four. Okay, perfect. There you go. Okay. So let's, uh, we're going into the seventh round. Yep. Would you like to re-roll uh, sure. the initiative dice? And can you pull me a dueling magic, yes. a dueling magician's card? Oh. This goes out. Here we go. So, oh no. This is that, that one that says if you, uh, everybody else gets, gets your yield modifier. Oh. Well, the good thing is that card says Fridays and Saturdays, so there's no yield oh, modifiers. Oh, perfect. <laughs> that is perfect. Yeah, that is good. Oh, wow, that was good news. Yeah. Okay, so then these go here, these two here, and then these two right there. Wow. That's unfortunate. Very unfortunate. And that's that. Okay, let's we do it. We <laughs> are ready to begin. I can pay a coin. I'm going to pay a coin. To advertise? Yes. I am now in 36. Nice. Level 36. So there goes my... Are you going to pay three? Yeah, might as well. All right, so uh, you get your two fame as well. So now you're yep. at 40. You crossed into the 40, <laughs> Naveen. I need as many points as possible because it's have, not looking very, very good. Three monies here. Not very set up here. <laughs> All right, planning phase. Okay, ready? Uh, yeah. <laughs> Final yeah. assignment phase of One, the game. Two, three, and four. Uh, okay, flip. Oh, uh, yeah. Okay. 
Okay. Okay. All right, so I'm going first. Hmm. Wow, lots of theater stuff you got going on. Oh, you're going to the dark alley. Leave me alone. I'm going to go to the dark alley. It, it, well, oh, it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter because it's the same modifiers and everything. Uh, I'm going to go to the theater first. I guess I'll go here. Might as well get first dibs, I guess. Sure. And so two action points. I'm going to use my um, special assignment card that says instead of moving the trick, if I choose to do the reschedule action, I can remove it from the performance card and immediately receive that trick's yields. Yield modifiers still apply. So I'm going to do wow. that twice. I'm going to remove this one. Oops. <laughs> I'm removing this one and this one. So those are the two action points I'm spending, and so I'm gonna get the yields now, and they're both my floating table, so it's gonna be 10 fame. Wow. So 36 to 46. 46. Four money, so here's five, get back one, and two to carry on shards. So I was thinking about performing, which would've been really bad, and seeing as you have that festival magic card, which I'm assuming you're gonna use because you have more than one theater where you have... Uh, I'm definitely going to use it. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, this card is going to allow us to remove all of the remaining tricks from the theater. Yeah. Uh, and, and score them. It's a festival of magic. So... Yeah, and there's no race to the dark alley because we're just basically going there to get points, mm -hmm. right? So, uh, okay, let's go ahead and I'll put my manager back here. Okay. And I can load up to two things. So let's go ahead and load. Let's see, how can we make some links? So I can take this zigzag lady and load it here. Mm -hmm. And that creates a link right there. Yeah. And that's a level two. Yes, so two fame, I'm two assuming. Fame, yeah. Okay, so 42. And then I will load same type of trick here, creating a link there. Okay. So another two fame. Nice. Okay, and that's my uh, two loads that I can do. Awesome, okay, back to me. Mm -hmm. All right, so I'm gonna go back to the theater uh, with my assistant here. So it's another two action points, and with those two points, I'm gonna put my um, my last two floating table uh, tricks out here. Oh, nice. So this is gonna go back to that original spot that I vacated, because it's such <laughs> nice. a good spot. Yeah. I believe that's a, yeah, that's a Tricarion oh, shard one too. So that's wow. two links and a Tricarion shard. It's gonna be so four points. Four points, so 46 to 50. Yes, and then, then I'm gonna place this one, and I guess it doesn't really matter too much at this point, so I'm gonna put this one right here. So that is going to be another uh, two fame for sure. that link. So one, two, and I'm at 52. Okay. And back to you. All right. So uh, we're not going to perform. We're just going to tease everyone and leave. So we're going <laughs> to put that there. So that gets me three, and I have exactly three. You're like, don't mind me. So, yeah. Don't, don't mind me. We'll, we'll be fine. <laughs> uh, so how do I want to do this? This is an eyeball one. And I think if I do, is like the paperclip looking thing. So yeah. it's going to go there. So there's no link there. But because it's going to score passively at the end, uh, that'll be nice. Okay. So that's just out there. And then now these ones, uh, the clover leaf can go out, which is the eyeball. Mm -hmm. And I do see an eyeball here. Nice. So that's going to be... Um, one fame? One fame, yep. So, very good. And then I have one last one right here. This one can go right in here and creates two links. Uh, one with the gear symbol and one with the spinny one. So then it's going to be... I don't think this is a link, Oh, is that not a link? Oh, okay. Yeah, I think just this one here. Just that one there. I think yeah. that's the only one. So, the, okay, yeah. yeah. Oh, yeah, there's no circle. There's no circle, yeah. yeah that's right, okay. It would have been nice, though. So. <laughs> uh, and that's that. All right, so back to me. I'm just going to go to the dark alley and turn in a Tricarion shard to increase that. So now I have three uh, points. I'm just going to take two of these. Sure. Just for the, the points that they give, because yeah. we're not going to be able to use these anymore. Yeah, I'm going to do something very similar. Uh, I'm just going to go here. Um, because I have the Mechaniker, it's one, one, plus one, so yep. three total. Did you I'll just take which any ones? Two. Yeah. Okay, so there you two. go. Cool. There you go. Thank you. Uh, and then for my last uh, character, it's just going to be the Magician. Oh, so you are performing. I am. Perf I have to perform oh, in order with to this do card. That. Yeah. I see, yeah, it's a performance kind of uh, assignment mm -hmm. card. Mm -hmm. And uh, where are you going to put your final oh, downtown? Uh, you no, know, I don't think I need to do this because, um, let's see, how much do I have to pay? One, two, three, four, and I would just get four coins back. Okay, yeah, let's do it. So I'm going to put this out here. Well, you well no, it's only two. Well, yeah. have you increased your, do you have an, oh yeah. I don't have a shard. Oh, okay. Yeah, that, that's right. So uh, I will not be doing that. <laughs> so with that whole last round saying oh, I'm gonna buy this guy and do something great, it just didn't. It work didn't. Out. No, <laughs> it fizzled. It was from the start. It's been a fizzle. Okay. <laughs> so. All right. So let's perform then. <laughs> sure. uh, I'm gonna perform. Ha. Huh. 
Well, I can only choose one of these two. Which one has more links? <laughs> well, this one has one, two, three links. They both have three, but this has actual points attached to it. So I'm going to, I'm going to perform this, this theater. Yeah. And so, uh, there are no yield modifiers because it's a, it's a Friday. One of each of my tricks essentially is going to score. So it's sure. going to be five, six, seven, eight, yep. eight fame. So 60. I'm at 60 now. Uh, one, two, three, four, five. So five money and a Tricarion shard. And you, Naveen? Uh, I have that spade in there. So it's a uh, three money and two uh, points. One, two, three. I'll get two points. There's your money. Yeah. And uh, how many links did I say there were? One, two, three, you said? Three. All right. So 63. Mm -hmm. Awesome. And then who do I have backstage? I have my assistant and my engineer. So one Tricarion shard and two fame. So one, two, and the Tricarion shard. And then the actual card itself is two fame. So one, two, or 67. Yep. And another Tricarion shard. And that's it for this theater so nice. uh, we wipe this clean but because i have played my festival of magic card mm -hmm. it says after the performance phase which is now all remaining tricks are removed from the theater and their yields are paid to their owners so that's nice um i guess i'll do mine first sure you can do yours after typically we, we don't do this by the way mm -hmm. so it's just gonna be one of each again so five six seven eight fame nice so 67 plus eight is 75. Mm -hmm. And then one, two, three, four, five money and a Tricarion shard. Uh, what about you? Very good. Okay, so uh, I think I get one, two, three, three, three points or? Well, so you have two of your diamond ones. Oh, for all of them, yeah. It's so, for all okay. of them, yeah. So uh, it's going to be. It's two diamonds, two, for two diamonds. spade, and a clover. So it's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine points. Okay. So you're here. Mm -hmm. So 48 plus nine mm -hmm. is 57. Yep. Okay. And then coins wise, I get one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Nine, nine money? Nine money, yeah. So, so here's a 10. Sure, we'll call that a 10. Yeah, it yeah. is a 10. Okay, good. <laughs> yeah, uh, and that's that. So uh, we have reached the end of the game. So you have to pay our your wages. Scores are not fantastic, but we do have to pay our wages. So here are your trick markers. Okay. Uh, it's still the standard four. For me, uh, three so for me back. because I did not deploy this person. These two did not, or I spent those two, so they go out. And then now we go into end game stuff. Okay. So neither of us succeeded in getting <laughs> a level thirty six trick. No, that no. is the bummer of the day. Yeah. But uh, we do have some end game scoring to uh, to, to collect on. So it's one point per Dracarion shard. Zero. Okay, so I have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Wow. So seventy five plus eight. 83. 83. And then uh, every three money is one point. So I have 5, 10, 11, 12, 13. So that's four points. Mm -hmm. One, two, I three, have exactly four. 15, so I get five points. Okay, so to 62. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Nobody has level 36 tricks. Those really would have given us end game scoring, but unfortunately we don't have that. And so now you just count all of your special assignment cards that you have not used. I have two of them. And that's two points each. So yep. you have four points. One, two, three, four. Oh my God. I have seven. So that's going to be 14 points. So 87 plus 14, that's 87, 97, 1, 2, 3, 4. Where is it? Oh, 101. One. One. There, 101. Oh, broke 100. <laughs> okay, that's, hey. Good that's job. Something. I mean, I, I had to use that festival, uh, festival card. You uh, did, yeah. We didn't do too hot <laughs> in this gameplay. I will say I am notoriously bad at this game. I am very bad at this game, but I enjoy my, my plays of it. But I never know what I'm doing. I'm just a chicken with my head cut off. Uh, I will, you know, we're not going to lie. There was a moment there where we were a little bit afraid that uh, we might have to scrap this entire gameplay. Yeah. Because our scores were really low. We went into the fifth round in the 20s. <laughs> I never know what to prioritize um, early on in the game. I'm always still like scrambling and just, what should I do? What should I get? So it just kind of tells you kind of how much depth there is to it's the game very deep there's yeah. a very uh, specific um amount of planning that is involved it's like planning replanning rechecking your planning and uh just trying to like roll with the punches uh yeah. especially with the the prophecies you never know what's going to come up you can definitely it's still highly strategic you can mm -hmm. definitely maneuver that to try to make it work in your favor uh the dueling magicians cards you never know which spaces are going to be available yeah, those are kind of brutal and, sometimes yeah so you definitely want to have a tricarion shards 
uh, available for that. And you want you want to have four workers. This is this is a big mistake on my part, and I don't know why. I I, I knew better than that, but I only worked with three workers. So I was constantly ping-ponging, just doing the same action over, like, oh, load my trick, send it there. Okay, just perform. Oh, okay, now I have to do it again, next round, next round. And so I found myself kind of in this like rat race of like, ah, oh, like I, I can't break the cycle because I'm gonna lose points. So. You maybe wanna have more than four. Yeah. I think that was probably my mistake also. I should have probably acquired or hired a fifth worker at some point, but I was just, I'm so afraid of losing money and like you Not have to pay to for those yeah, wages in addition to the components that you're, you're purchasing. Um, I don't even know if I like. I wasted moves going to the market row to to put this guy in there, and Same. I didn't even buy a component. Same. Yeah. I uh, I also bought a bunch of items early, totally forgetting that you can you can only get a level two trick if you're at sixteen or greater. So I set up two rounds worth of purchasing of stuff, and then re having that realization in that round where I was like, I can't buy this <laughs> trick. So everything i've done leading up to this moment yeah, is a waste it's rough. so it, i basically played a five round game uh kind of in my opinion <laughs> so i struggled <laughs> but uh i know better for next time that's for sure the whole point of the, the whole mind clash series is so that we can be a little bit more informative if you have a copy of the game or if you're interested in checking it out now you know how it plays now you know what it what's kind of involved in that decision making like we were mentioning at the beginning of the teach you do not have to play with a dark alley expansion which is the prophecies as well as the special assignment cards because obviously those can throw wrenches in strategies and mm -hmm. they can cause a lot more uh it's just a lot more for you to think about. Yep. You can play with the opposite side of the board that doesn't have that, and it's shorter as well. It's only right. five rounds. We only play with the dark, the dark alley expansion, just because yeah. we think it's fun. It's not. It's not. You know. It's not required. It's not just because it's heavier doesn't mean that you have to play it that way. Yeah, I, I, I prefer to play it with that. I think we've gone back after playing with it and played without it, and I felt kind of slightly unfulfilled. Mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. So for us, the dark alley is kind of base the way game. to go. Yeah. Anyway. We hope you enjoyed this video. If you have any questions whatsoever about the gameplay as well as the rules, uh, please leave a comment down below and we will try to get back to you as soon as possible. In the meantime, we are going to be putting out another video for to carry on. So we're going to try to fix the mistakes that we made in this <laughs> gameplay as well as the, yes. the preparation, preparing the, the theater cards yep. for the next, uh, the next video that we're going to put out, which is going to include the expansion, which is the Dollgard Academy, the mm -hmm. big expansion. Yep. So. Well, thank you all so much for watching the video. We hope you enjoyed it. If you'd like to see more videos like this in the future, please consider subscribing. Bye. Thanks.